In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint your Star Wars Legion Rebel Troopers in a way that's quick and easy and still gets great results. Let's get started. What's going on Mini Junkies? Jared here. So in this video, like I said, I'm going to show you how to paint your Rebel Troopers, so the two squads that come in the core box, in an, kind of an unorthodox way and in an unusual way that I think the purists are going to be like, what the f I think you guys are really going to dig it. And like I said, it's super easy and it's very, very quick. I think it took me just under a couple hours to paint them all. And that was with stopping to shoot video and stuff like that. And it uses, um, predominantly uses inks. And so I'm going to show you in the video what you're going to need to pick up if you don't have it already uh, to paint these. And hopefully this video shows you that there's not always one right way to do things, despite all the fact there's a lot of tutorials out there, there's a lot of painting advice, but sometimes understanding the different mediums you have to work with and how you can apply them to a certain project can be super valuable and can lead to a lot of discoveries and a lot of interesting results. So without any further ado, let's get to the painting table and I'll show you how to do this. As Luke Skywalker himself would say, this is not going to go the way you think it is. And we're done. Uh, no, this is an example of the color scheme we're going for. This is obviously an action figure of the Scarif Rebels from Rogue One. And here's another example of what one of the actors would have looked like. Here's a few shots I took of what the final product is going to look like. Um, not the best shots I've ever taken, but you get the idea. And then here's a lineup. You can pause to look at some of the inks and washes that I used to, to do this. So as I've mentioned before, um, or I think I have, when you're going to do like a unit like this you're going to want to do assembly line style so I'll actually be doing that in this video except I'll only be showing you the painting I'm doing on one guy and then the rest I'll do off camera. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to prime it with something in a sort of a bone or sand color. I'm going to be using that Vallejo surface primer desert tan but you could use something like uh, like an army painter desert color or uh, Ushapti bone from GW, something like that. But it is important that that's the f color we're going to use as our sort of under highlight for the entire miniature. So you want to basically cover this whole guy with this desert beige bone colored uh, primer, whatever you decide to use. After that, we're going to go in and we're going to apply some bronzed flesh Vallejo model air uh, just to the faces and maybe to a couple hands. I think the uh, leaders have bare hands, but not too many other ones. Uh, mostly it'll be the face. All right, here's where it starts to get interesting. We're using GW Seraphim Sepia. And what we're going to be doing here is painting the shirt sleeves and the shirts underneath the vest, basically the part that's supposed to be that kind of tan, light browny kind of color on the uh, Scarif guys. And what I'm going to do is paint it on um, right from the pot because we do want it to be thick, we do want it to stain. We're not actually going for a wash here, we're going for a bit of a stain effect. And that's why uh, in the course of this assembly line I'm actually going to paint on it. Um, paint a coat on, let it dry as I paint the other ones, and then paint over a second time because I want to darken them up a fair bit. But what happens is the this wash is going to shade the recesses, but it's also going to tint the highlights, and yet the, the bone color will still shine through and create a highlight on the sleeves. Next step is P3 Flesh Wash, which I have a giant bottle of apparently. Uh, this you're going to apply to all the flesh areas just like a normal wash it like you usually would. Uh, mostly it's going to be the faces in this case and I think I overly slopped it on here so I go back in and, and suck some of it off with the brush. Um, wish I had said that differently. The first ink we're going to use is Vallejo Game Ink Brown and we're going to apply it all over the, the pants, trousers, whatever. Um, just basically slop it on there. Don't be too worried about pooling. It's actually not so bad if it's going to pool. In this case, we want some pretty deep shadows and brighter highlights. I believe I'm going to do this one as well for two coats, although I won't show it. And again, that's to make sure that it doesn't look, you know, too light, but it has a nice rich brown color uh, without completely obscuring the highlight.
Now what I've done is I've added a couple drops of Vallejo black ink, which I barely showed there for a second, to the brown to darken it. And it really just creates a dark brown, which I'm now just liberally applying to the boots and the sort of boot cover things they have on. And yeah, I mean, really quickly just slop it on there. Don't worry too much about being messy because we're going to do the bases later. With a smaller brush, I'm then going to go in and take that same dark wash that we just made, or dark ink, sorry, it's not a wash, and I'm going to apply it to the belts and pouches and things like that, just around the waist areas. Now for these two alien guys with blue skin, I first decided to try this Vallejo uh, gray-blue wash, uh, but that didn't work. And I don't know why I didn't edit it out, because I thought I did. But then I used Secret Weapon Cool Gray, because the first thing didn't work. So Secret Weapon Cool Gray wash, just apply this all over their head and let it dry and then do it again. And I think I might have done it three times, maybe twice, just to get a decent um, amount of blue and like I said the that underbone color is going to help create highlights all over the face and on top of the head and stuff but that's that's how I did those guys I'm not going to let you see what I'm doing apparently All right, quick flash, sepia ink. Now I'm applying sepia ink. And again, I'm not diluting this or thinning it. It's right out of the bottle. I'm painting it right over the bone uh, colored um, or sand colored base coat or primer. Um, what I found, and it's, it's tough to see in the video, I have to admit, but what I found is it creates this really cool dark brown distressed or aged leather look. Um, it looks especially cool on the coats of the leaders. And again, like super easy, I just paint on one layer and that's it. For the uh, vests and any dark blue or very, it's almost like a dark blue gray. I, it was tough to pick the paint for this and unfortunately this is the one longer step where you do need to paint because I just couldn't think of a way to get this effect through glazing and stuff. But it's a really nice color. It's P3, I want to say, well, whatever it was just now on the screen, Gravedigger Denim or something like that. Uh, you're going to paint it on all and yeah, thin it uh, with a bit of thinner medium or water, um, but it goes on pretty light and just paint in all the vests or anywhere you really want to have that sort of dark blue gray color that's on the uh, Scarif troops. I also paint the top of each of their sort of helmets, um, if you call it a helmet, uh, with that same blue. Now what we want to do is darken that down. So what I'm using here is Vallejo Model Wash Black. I was looking for one that, similar to Nuln Oil, by the way, you could really, you could use Nuln Oil if you can't find this wash. Um, I want to darken that blue gray down more and make it very, very dark and just a bit bluish. Um, so I am basically just going to liberally apply this black wash all over the blue areas we just painted. Um, that I just painted, I assume you painted. And yeah, the goal is to darken it and to have it uh, go into the, into the recesses and stuff like that. And someday, I promise, I'm going to get consistent focus on these darn tutorials, but there are a few of these shots I have to apologize, they're kind of fuzzy. All right, for this step, I wanted to um, darken the gloves. I decided I wanted dark gloves, and I decided to use the sepia ink again uh, and go for that sort of aged dark brown look on these. 
same same basic process and you can see in the bottom corner that i've been doing each step to all of the troops as i go as an assembly line and i just am not showing that on camera So for this next step, I want to do the um, the backpack and the straps. And by now, you've probably got ink on the straps, and they've got lost sort of that under highlight effect we're going for. So what I did is I took Ushabti bone, or you could use any bone color, and I painted back, you know, brought the straps back with that, uh, painted them back in where necessary. And now what I'm doing is I'm using Secret Weapon Stone Wash. It's a really nice sort of gray green looking uh, wash, and I guess I should have pointed out that I find the secret weapon washes have a, quite a staining effect, um, which is fine. As long as you know how they behave, then you can use them to your advantage. In this case, I'm purposely staining the backpack and the straps this sort of stone grayish green color just to kind of complement the rest of the uniform and not look, uh, you know, too monotone. I think and the end result looks so good, I'm thinking of using it for um, Luke's Bespin outfit later in another tutorial. In Moving right along, a uh, quick highlight on the face with Kislev Flesh. Because I'm painting these troops as, um, you know, tabletop, going pretty fast, uh, I'm just doing like one quick highlight with this. So we're really in the home stretch at this point. Uh, I've already reached the stage where I want to apply matte varnish. You can paint this on, you can use a tester's dull coat spray. But we're doing this now to take that ink shine off of everywhere. Uh, that it's still you know shiny and also we're doing it before the metallics and I personally am a big believer in that because the matte varnish can really take the shine and metallic look out of your metallics so here's the model after the matte varnish has been drying on it looks much much nicer now that all the shine is gone I'm gonna paint the metallics with uh, you can use any kind of like you know lead belcher or gunmetal color I'm using Vallejo Air um, gunmetal here but you can use whatever you have access to and like I said um, rather quickly I do my metallics as much as possible after I varnish with matte because I've decided recently that it just looks so much nicer to uh, when you don't hit your metallics with a matte varnish and take all of the nice shine away from them once that's dry I just do a basic dry brush over each of the weapons that I painted with the gunmetal here I'm using an old color called chainmail from GW it's similar to like a runefang steel or any kind of like middle of the road uh, silvery color it's not bright silver and it's not gunmetal I just dry brush it on all the weapons very basic Next up is a quick wash with Nuln Oil Gloss on all the weapons, noting that I am using gloss to, again, avoid um, dulling down the metallics, but to add a little bit of depth to them. Last step here is to use Desert, Stan Desert Sand Paste from Vallejo, um, which is this basically the technique I used in my uh, making desert bases video for the stormtroopers and I'm using an old brush to apply this and I'm really just going to paint it onto the base let it dry and then give the entire thing a wash with GW serif and sepia that's it and again here's a look at the final result obviously I should have stressed at the start that we're going for a really nice taper tabletop look here I'm not going to win any awards uh, but I think it looks great If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing for more and liking and sharing the video. See you next time.